Welcome back guys and welcome to the first video of 2020, a brand new decade and hopefully a decade full of more Porsche uh, and Audi goodness. And who the hell knows what else we'll get into. It's obviously been a long time since we have done a Cayman video. We have been gathering parts to continue the engine build. Unfortunately, the parts I bought uh, originally for it, all the bearings and everything, I bought for the wrong engine. So we had to get those sent back and we got the new ones and they're finally here. As with all future videos on this particular project, it is sponsored by Flat Six Motorsports. See that little banner up there? Those guys. I'm gonna post a link to their website in the top of the description. If you need anything for your late model Porsches, uh, especially performance parts, they are the go-to place. So do me a favor, go check them out. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. I'll uh, put a link down there below for them as well. Uh, support them for supporting us and make sure you let them know that uh, you heard it here. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump back into this thing. Uh, I did a little bit of work off camera. Basically, I went through and I measured all of the oil clearances for my bearings. One of the main issues with this engine and one of the things that makes me nervous about building it is it's really hard to find published specifications for stuff. So I have a factory service manual, which is right here and it's got all sorts of great info in here about how to do things but nothing about oil clearances or bearing tolerances basically everything that they tell you to do uh, they just say replace with factory Porsche parts so it's not it's not meant for a project like this in order to come up with those tolerances I had to do some math myself the standard for a normal engine is one thou per inch of diameter on the shaft so for the crankshaft on the main bearings on this particular car it was like 2.485 inches for a high performance application you're supposed to do one and a half thou uh, so I went through and I did all my math and on the main bearings, it's between two and a half thou or uh, 0 0.0037, 37, 10 thousandths, whatever you want to call it. And then I did the same math for the uh, rod bearings, uh, the rod bearing journals, and uh, those were right at two inches, so they were a little bit smaller. But that's all done, it's checked. If you guys need to know how to do that, I've done it in other videos. I'll throw a link up here to uh, what probably isn't a very good video because it's one of the first I ever did, but it's my four cylinder Porsche turbo stroker. Uh, and there's a lot of technical info in there about how to properly check for your oil clearances with micrometers and inside mics and T gauges and blah, 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 blah. I'm done talking for a while. Let's start putting it together. Time for some assembly lube, which I do not apply sparingly. Uh, one thing I need to do before I drop the crank in, which I almost forgot to be honest with you, is the thrust washers. Uh, so these sit right here on this center uh, cap, if you want to call it that, and that's what limits the amount of crank movement this way. And now we get to drop the uh, crank in, which is not light. Next up, we will drop on the other side of the carrier block. Next, we need to torque all these bolts down. I have the torquing sequence written on here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 all the way through. The uh, torque specifications are 11 foot-pounds and then an additional 120 degrees. I'm going to get my lovely assistant, Alan, in here to help me hold this while I torque it down. It's on a rolling bench. That may not seem like all that much, but that's a pretty big deal. This thing hasn't been bolted together for like... Well, this particular one, 10 years. Before we move any further, we need to measure our crankshaft in play. The crankshaft movement this way. 
I've got my dial indicator set up at zero. And let's see what we get here. We get right at four thousandths. The standard Porsche factory specs for crankshaft in play are between two thou and nine and a half thou. So we are in the sweet spot. We can continue moving forward. So funny story. Um, and I'd appreciate it if you guys didn't tell anyone because it's, uh, it's pretty embarrassing. But, uh, well, I put the crank in backwards. So everything I just did, I'm going to undo and flip the crank around and do it again. I installed the oil separator off camera. It's just six bolts uh, along with these new gaskets. It has basically a rubber strip that goes all the way around here and here. The next thing we need to do and the last thing before we can actually drop it into the case half is the uh, IMS shaft chain and tensioners that go right here. The factory service manual says that you can reuse these chains. This is an original chain. Uh, you have to obviously inspect it for wear or any oddities. I did not see any, so we are going to go ahead and reuse this chain. I got new tensioners to go on for obvious reasons. This black one goes here. And then the aluminum tensioner slides onto a post down here and it has a shim and a snap ring. And there it is. Pretty simple. I'm guessing that the rest of the timing chain system that actually goes up to the cams, not going to be quite as simple. Before I drop the crank block in, I need to put some sealant on this flange surface here. That's where the crank block sits, and these are all oil galleys. So we need to make sure that that's properly sealed. I'm gonna be using Loctite 574. Uh, this is what I use in really all my Porsche engines as far as sealing this type of thing. You don't have to put a lot on there, uh, really not a lot at all. This is a machine surface. There's gonna be almost no gap, so you don't wanna go nuts with this. Otherwise, it'll take forever to dry. As you saw, I kind of just went around and tapped it with my finger to tack it up a little bit, uh, make sure I had coverage everywhere. And now, I'm gonna drop this crank block in. It looks like I may have to go ahead and throw the IMS shaft in at the same time. Well, there's another free lesson for you. Uh, you cannot drop this in until the IMS shaft is installed. This is what makes me so nervous about this engine. Um, there just there aren't good publications as far as <laughs> exactly what to do. So this $20,000 engine is what it'll be worth when it's done if I don't mess it up. To an extent, I'm assembling it by trial and error. Now, everything is uh, <laughs> very, very educated guesses, but you know, it's it's just not completely black and white. So that's a little frustrating. What are you gonna do? I don't know how well you can see this, but see how the chain follows, 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 and then goes up, and then follows, follows, and starts to bow back out. Something's not right here. One of the components is not right. The chain fits on the crankshaft fine, but the IMS shaft is not cooperating. One of the issues with this engine that the previous owner told us about was he sent it off to a company to have it built into a 3.8. That company sat on it for two years and didn't do anything with it and ended up going out of business. He had to go physically pick the engine up and it was in a pile of parts. There, when we, when we originally went through the engine, I'll throw a link to that video up here, there were, you know, there was a, a flywheel and a pressure plate, so a manual and an automatic. Uh, there were multiple intakes and there was just, there were more parts than what the original engine would have been disassembled into. So unfortunately there is a chance that some of the components that we got are not correct. I don't know if that's what's going on with the IMS bearing or the IMS shaft. There is a part number on it right here. I'm gonna have to cross reference it. This is not how I saw this video going. I had planned to 
go ahead and drop this in and then even go ahead and throw uh, the rods and pistons in on cylinders one, two, and three. Yeah, that's, that's not happening anymore. I'm gonna have to call it quits here and I'm gonna have to figure out what the hell is going on with this IMS shaft. I guess it uh, is an opportunity to go ahead and get an IMS bearing coming in. So when I do install this, I can complete that portion of it. I don't know, I'm frustrated guys. I was finally, you know, really excited about jumping back into this project and man, this was just a kick in the balls. Anyway, we'll see you next time.